on, folks. What's up? Hi. We have well, a guest. Yeah, we do. And I th I'm going to let Ches take care of the introduction because she did a great one just now before we went <laughs> live. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's probably not. Sure you don't, gorgeous. don't mess okay. it up. Okay. It was fabulous. Like everyone, gorgeous. welcome to Here's the Deal. I'm Ches, Sarah, and we've got a very special guest, Miss Brige Washington, the fabulous, the talented. I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having um, me, guys. Yeah. We're pumped that Brige's here. Yep. We got two Longhorns in the house. What, what? Uh, Longhorns, do you feel me? Get those horns up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So this is going to be a fun one. This is going to be, a, gonna be a doozy. This, this is going to be a doozy. So if you haven't been under a rock <laughs> the last week or so, um, you know that Coach Mike Latif uh, was put on administrative leave. Yes. And... Just last week, he was fired yep. by the Raging Cajuns. Mm -hmm. And there are different reports. There are many thoughts. And Ches Berger and I are going to go through those with you and share our thoughts. Yeah, typically, you know, we tackle at least two or three topics during the show. But we're literally just going to stick with this one because as we've <laughs> done some digging... And more information has surfaced. It is. We've dug pretty far, folks. Yeah. yeah. The, and, shade, uh, the, the shade is real. The, sh <laughs> <laughs> the shade is real, folks. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. So, he was placed on administrative leave. October 6th. Or he was fired October 6th. He was placed no, on administrative leave October 6th. Yes. For what people were saying was um, he was fighting for equality for his team. There was some gender discrimination. It was a Title IX issue. Um, and then he was fired. Yeah. A couple weeks and, later. Well, th if you back up to, uh, you know, Coach being placed on administrative leave, it was based on uh, allegations and accusations from a former player. Mm -hmm. And uh, you actually brought this to my attention. Uh, a letter that was written uh, to some other former players um, about some of these altercations or alleged altercations. Uh, but it's just, I, I have to admit, when I first read the letter, um, and this was, let's see, dated back to uh, not that long ago, November. I think it's November 2nd mm -hmm. is the story. It, it's, uh, I guess it's the local news station, KPEL, mm -hmm. Rob Kirkpatrick, uh, wrote up the story. Um, you know, because in that time that he was on administrative leave, it was all about kind of, Oh, he's fighting for gender equality. Like, there really was no discussion about mm -hmm. any kind of complaints that came in. And then, kind of out of the blue, almost, yeah. this got published. Yeah. Um, so and it was based on a player that graduated, correct? Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, I do not That's believe no longer it was there. A, yeah. yeah. So that player spent four years yeah. there. And um, there's some pretty damning stuff. I mean, when, when you guys first read the letter, what was your initial reaction? Did you believe it right off the bat, or were, did you have some questions? I didn't simply, be, simply because when players aren't happy at a university, they can ask to be released, and they can go transfer other, other, to other universities. And so many players have done that when they're actually really genuinely unhappy at their university. So to be able to read that and know that she finished her whole career underneath him, unhappy and saying that you know he was... Uh, supposedly saying demeaning things to them and, you know, just not treating them right with the utmost respect. I, I just, I couldn't really buy into it, especially after, like, talking to him and playing against him. You right. Know, I and just he, never. And you I just actually kind of share some of your insight. Yeah. Because you've, you've played against mm -hmm. Louisiana Lafayette, so have I. Yeah. But you've also played with and against some of um, his former players. Yeah, and I actually had a conversation with one of them, like, you know, hey, like, have you heard all this stuff going on with your coach? Like, you know, like, have he, has he ever, like, you know, talked to you guys crazy? And they're just like, no, oh my God, he's the nicest man ever. And I'm like, I know, like, if anything, like, playing against him, he has so much energy, like, and he's just so passionate about the sport. And I'm just like, if anything, I'm like, oh, my God, I would love to play for someone like that, you know, that's just excited to get out there and, you know, just excited for good things to happen for the program. And he's changed that program around. So I just I couldn't really believe all that stuff either. Just I've, I, everybody that I've talked to that came from that university, they had nothing but good things to say about him. So for me, it wasn't necessarily a do I believe it or not. It was like 
it was something that had was completely counter to everything else that had been put out. So I like I wanted to read it and I wanted to see if there were more reports like this, right? Like it wasn't like a oh this is bullshit or oh this is like really damning. Like I wanted to f- see if there's any really any substance there mm-hmm. because they are damning. I mean, they're t- it's not sexual abuse, but they're talking like verbal and physical abuse, mm-hmm. which is those are pretty serious. Like it's not, you know, in in some of the recount of this former player, it's like. They said that he grabbed her by the hair oh, wow. and pulled her hair and like made her cry. Um, you know, there's and where so were the witnesses though? They don't have anyone that can say that they actually. I mean, you. you it's seen funny. That no, it's happen. funny that you say that because um, you, there's no witnesses. The Daily Advisor actually put out an, an article with the headline title like where are all the witnesses? Exactly. Like, so, so you're getting this report from this one girl, which I wanted to give credence to, and I wanted to, like, kind of see if it's actually something, if there's actually something there or not. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's kind of all this evidence that we're going to talk about, kind of all this evidence that all his players are behind him, you know, people who knew him are behind him, and there's just kind of this one damning report that doesn't seem to have enough yeah, legs and, to stand is on. That, like is that, a, is that even needs. enough? Yeah, exactly. Right, so you take one person's report, and I, what I find uh, alarming about this whole in- investigation is, you know, talking with some of the current players, um, nobody was questioned during this investigation process. No one could confirm or or not confirm mm-hmm. the, the accu- allegations and accusations. Like, yeah. how do you how do you just up and fire them without any additional mm-hmm. confirmation of like, yes, this is what happened? You know, I talked to some uh, to one of the former players, and she was at every single one of those moments that were mentioned right. in letter, and her version of the story is completely different. Yeah, and. You know, is this a case of words being twisted around to fit a, a certain storyline? Um, to me, that's looking like more of the case because if you watch the press conference, that you know, Coach Lotif was there with his uh, lawyer. Um, every single one of his players was there, mm-hmm. minus one who was not in town. Right, and the the team, all the the current team put out a letter saying that, uh, like verbatim, they said that the university is intentionally trying to disor- destroy our program. And uh, in the letter, they say that the administration is incompetent. Uh, they can't handle these issues. Um, and they that they've it- reached out to multiple people and no one wants to hear them. So mm-hmm. they're trying to figure out a way to get their story, their story out because no one knows their perspective. Everyone just knows like about the letter right. and then his deal. Yeah, so it's a, it's it's very. Um, but you back up to the core thing that uh, Coach Latif has like tried to hammer home. This whole thing arose from him bringing up issues of inequality mm-hmm. between the male and the female sports. Mm-hmm. And you know, is this a witch hunt to kind of like shut him up? Yeah. Um, the the evidence that we've seen is starting to lean in that direction. You know. Um, and then talking with the players on some of what they've experienced at the university, you know, grass not being cut when the grass is being cut every single day at football. And they're not even using that field. Yeah. I remember reading that in her uh, interview. Yeah. And that's a big thing. That's a big part of our sport, like our field. Like You're on it every single you're day. You're on it. We play in the outfield. Like, you need your grass to be cut. You can't, like, that's, that's injuries. And that also brings me to them not having a trainer during the fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Unacceptable. That's not, that's not okay. Yeah, so those are a couple of the issues, like, okay. for some of you who may not know exactly what we're talking about, some of the issues that Coach Mike Lotif raised. They're, they're simple equality issues. It's not, it was nothing, it wasn't an exorbitant ask. It was like, we need our field taken care of and maintained. We need the grass cut. We, we need, need a trainer. We need a trainer <laughs> when all the other, when, when like it's mandatory or protocol for sports to have an athletic trainer. Uh, apparently, the Raging Cajun softball team hasn't had one for a year now uh, in one of the reports that I read. So those are kind of the... The seemingly simple asks, it, like it wasn't like, like we wanted a new b- stadium yeah. built. Like just cut the grass. There's an issue like, about protein shakes, and I guess they fought that for a while, and then yep. they finally were able to get some. But it's like that's 
at the University of Texas, that was that was like we didn't have to ask for stuff like that. That was it was there, and so mm -hmm. to know that they had to deal with that, or like they didn't have a trainer on hand, and they had to go and wait for other trainers to get done with their sports that they're assigned to for them to be able to get treatment. That cotton saddens me, and that that is like he has a reason to fight for that. He has a reason to be upset about that. Like I don't think that 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 makes him a bad man, or like you know makes him like an angry guy. Like I, I think anyone would be upset about. Your grass not being cut, your players right. not having the trainer that they need on hand, or you know what I'm saying? Like, like here's the deal. Ugh. Here's it's frustrating. Here's uh, the there it deal. Is, folks. Here's the deal. <laughs> your ULL, you're probably the winningest program, like out of all the sports. At, yeah, at they the are. university, hands down. He changes you're, that program around. You're the most successful team in the Sun Belt Conference, ever, ever. They have what three you, World Series appearances? Uh, yes, three? not to mention like they host regionals. <laughs> oh my! Like we so, played them yeah, my, you, my senior year. We played them there, and they're and they're not taken care of. Yeah, like that's blasphemy. Yeah, like Raging Cajuns, you're you're not a football university. Like you're softball <laughs> university. Like that's yeah. your that's your sport. Like that is the crowning sport of your. You want to know school. how crazy their fans are? Oh you god! You know we do. Oh yeah, we do this super poll fans with uh, stadiums. Yes. I will tell you, we put Lampson Stadium on there, and they were voting like freaking gangbusters. That's how crazy these fans are. And it, it really saddens me that this program is going to be completely dismantled because of a decision like this. And I, I feel for those fans, and especially the players. I mean, could you imagine? Like, middle, they, like, they were completely blindsided. Like you, one minute you transfer there, or like it's your senior year, yeah. you're getting super excited about season, and then that's literally you around know, the corner. Begin beginning of October, oh, coaches on leave, oh, coaches fired, oh, the whole coaching staff <laughs> is fired. Yeah, like oh, it, and then I can't return to my locker room. Yeah, after to get I go to stuff? stand behind my coach in an interview, now I go to the locker room to get my things and I'm locked out of my locker room. Yeah, that's a fun little tidbit, everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after the press conference that their coach players had, attended. And the whole team was there, like Roger mm -hmm. was saying, um, they went to go back to the locker room because they had their stuff there. They had school materials that they needed mm -hmm. for the next day and the locker room was locked. Padlock on the door. There's they had a to wait an hour. Uh, yeah. Like it was, it's it's like it's, it's this lunacy. Is, this is this is weird. This is and it's, it's gonna so get messy. Weird. This is gonna get. I think messy. it's gonna get really messy. This is gonna get messy. Lawyers, the whole deal. I'm I'm predicting. It's just wrongful termination at this point. Like yeah, and it's ob it's for obvious reasons. Like, well, he's complaining. Um, he's got health issues. Now he's bringing gender. He's complaining about whole gender role issues, and then mm -hmm. he has health issues, and now they're like, you know what? We're just gonna eliminate this. And they're just hurting the university. I, I feel like at the end of the day, yeah, that's it's just like it's just like it's very unfortunate, and for a program that would not be where they are without the low teeves. Mm -hmm. And you can't forget about his wife Stephanie. She's mm -hmm. been through it the whole time, but it's just like it's kind of unbelievable. I do want to. I do want to bring up. So we did an Instagram poll about mm -hmm. you know whether people agreed with the fire or not. And um, thirty-one percent actually agreed with the firing, and this was—I mean, it's not a huge sample size, but it was—it was over probably twelve hundred votes that we got. Um, so there are thirty, thirty-one percent of those people actually think that it was a rightful firing. So, like, I, I'm just—that was was that off of the initial article? Like, was that just off of them reading that letter, or did they know more about the issue? At this point, I think we did this Friday or Saturday. I think at this point. They had like heard that he was fired, mm -hmm. and the the uh, the former player's account had been put out. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the information that was around this timing. So, you know, there's he's definitely you know so some of the verbal abuse claims. Mm -hmm. um, he's obviously not. He's obviously saying that he he's not abusive, but he is kind of walking back and saying like I'm not perfect. I'm not a saint. He actually said yeah. that. And there are some players who are like. Oh, it's not abuse. It's just passion. I think you even said that, mm -hmm. and um, and it's kind of the culture that he's built. So, I, I'm wondering, kind of, you know, we're on opposite spectrums here with these reports. I'm wondering where the truth is. I have a feeling it's probably closer to where Lotif is. But I wonder. Yeah, I, I just, wonder. I, I wonder if his culture is a little too 
Mm, I don't want to say passionate or intense because those yeah, are but good is that, things. Does that come as a surprise? I mean, if you've watched ULL, the man has a trach tube in, and he's halfway down the line, like, <laughs> coaching up his players. Like, that's who he is. Yeah. Um, I can even, uh, Lexi Elkins had posted um, a whole statement on Instagram, and she was saying she walked into that program. She was kind of mentally you know, soft just based going off of the program she came from where she was not happy. So mm -hmm. she obviously got a chance to transfer. And she was asking players, you know, you know, what did they like about the program? And everyone was like, oh, my God, he's so straightforward. He's very passionate about the sport. And so she was saying she was going into that program, you know, soft, not understanding, you know, like, you know, how passionate, like, you know, what the definition of passion sure. is. And she said, it, if anything, it just made her want to be more competitive. And she came from a program where she wasn't, you know, the most standout to, like, Kill, smashing the ball at LSU. I mean, she, at breaking UL, records. She was breaking number one. Records. Records. Smashing she was records. the number one pick, yes. right? Out of number one for draft MPF. pick for the MPF. Yep. And I mean, and that was a soft girl that was coming into a harder program. Mm -hmm. And she said, if anything, it just made her be more competitive. It never made her want to ball up in a knot and feel like she was being mentally or you know physically abused by him. And so I mean, and I know her personally, and mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like if anything, she grown. She grew as an athlete because I got to play against her when she was at Texas Tech, and then I also got to play against her when she was at UOL. So, I mean, and night she's a and very day. genuine, she's a very genuine person. It, like, her whole level of play was, like you said, night and day. And so, I just, I'm, I'm just more on this, I'm more of on his side. Like, it, this is some underlying, you know, let's just get him, yeah. sweep him under the rug and try to get him out of here. We got a question. All right. Uh, Zachary, right Zachary Hancock, we see you. Um, are players leaving UL eligible for transfer this spring? Uh, Follow-up question, could the admin have any control uh, over releasing or not releasing players wishing to leave? So t basically talking about transfers. I, I would think, um, I don't have the rules in front of me right now, but I would think they would be able to transfer even mid-semester. Yeah. Uh, because with the coaching change, I think that kind of frees them up to transfer wherever uh, they have. It's just like what happens I when- I want to say that's correct. When there's a new coaching change and say you're signed to a university and there's a coaching change, you're free to uh, go elsewhere. So I would, I would not be surprised <laughs> to see an uprooting of many ULL players uh, going yeah, because this going isn't into just January. a this isn't just a hey we got a new coach uh, this is yeah. new coach this is a you we have came wronged, to this university you have wronged us yeah not even that these girls came to the university to play under this man mm -hmm. and so they're not. He's no longer there anymore, so it's like I don't want to play for the university anymore. Mm -hmm. I want to go and try to play with, you know, maybe the next best best coach. And on top of that, it's like these players do not have faith in the administration anymore of that oh, of that mm -hmm. of that department. So you know, on top of like we don't get to play for the coach that recruited us that we mm -hmm. want to be here for, and then on top of it, it's you're not listening to yeah. us. You do not respect yeah. us. You like you are wronging us. You are personally wronging us. Like that's what that letter. Like they feel personally like victimized by this ad, the, by this ad, athletic administration um, so it's yeah I think it's a safe bet that they're gonna be yeah and leaving. I'm sorry I'm gonna this is something the firing of like the assistant coach and yeah. whose wife is also on staff they have a kid I mean just like pretty ruthless yeah ruthless with with what we know as one letter mm-hmm Yes, exactly. Exactly. And no, there's no evidence or witnesses. Like, that is just asinine to think about. Yeah. Uh, Holly agrees with you guys. She believes that if head coach is fired, you can move free to go. So, mm -hmm. thank God that one. <laughs> Zach, we got you covered. We answered that one. I want to hear from the people who think it was actually a good firing, mm -hmm. right? So, like, we have our opinions. I mm -hmm. want to hear from the 31% of you who voted on our Instagram poll that agreed with the firing like what like what are you guys seeing in this that maybe some others aren't and like kind of why you think that it was a justifiable hiring mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna touch on this you know I, I, you guys feel free to comment on what Sarah just talked about on on uh, if you believe that it was a good firing but the concept of like you know when Coach Lotif is in that competitive environment, he's just going to let it fly. Yeah, like any coach would. Mm -hmm. uh, think about a football coach. <laughs> if football coaches were, if a, if a, I'm sure if a football player, I kind of ran this uh, this thought again. I mean, to my friend who actually played football, 
he was like, dude, if people knew half of the things my coach said to us, we wouldn't have, like, he wouldn't have a job either. And I'm just like, and girls, us women, we want to be treated like, you know, male sports, mm -hmm. and now we have a male coach or whatever. And they talk to us like that, and now you don't like it. Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of... I mean, there's a there's a difference, though. Like, yeah. it just depends how the con how it's yeah. being used in context. That's right, true. Relative to the situation. Like, and that's person, what it comes and down to. And the person, because yeah. I'm more so... Talk trash to me. I come from a family. Like, yeah. We saw all talk trash to each other. Like, I talk trash that, to you. That fuels us. You know what I'm saying? I like, talk I'm not trash gonna, to you, too. I'm just yeah. not going to ball up in a knot because you're talking trash to me. If anything, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to show you. Like, yeah. I, I'm gonna, I can show you better than I can tell you. Like, that doesn't... I don't take that as, oh, my God, they're so mean to me. Right. Like, they're trying to mentally you know destroy me like i don't know i i, I don't know I like think a, a good the coach person. a good coach can find a way to yeah. or like a good manager anything anybody that's in authority can find a good way to connect mm -hmm. with everybody in yeah. a certain but he has it like every coach kind of has their culture too yeah right? and i think i think um from some of the interviews that we did that we read like his culture was very clear to people yeah when they come on a visit when they came on a visit mm -hmm. so it's not you're not guessing at what you're getting with him he's very he's a straight and shooter, at some like universities said. you can get like you'll get that mm -hmm. and i came across that you know from me being friends with girls that went to other universities they're like oh my god the coach was nothing like how they were when i met him on my visit and so to for me to know that you know this coach is the same way and it's like well, why did you go there if you felt bad vibes you know what i'm saying yeah. so like i don't and I don't think, in the heat of the moment, I feel like anyone's going to be riled up. Like, anyone's going to be excited and passionate or, you know, yelling, like, let's go. Like, so I don't know. It bothers me. <laughs> I just feel like it's what, just What bothers you about it? That, it, like, either is it because you feel like, you know, we're possibly a culture that's become too sensitive? Or what is it? I think the per I think, because I'm not, we obviously don't know who wrote the letter. I think that person, I Either they had some underlying other issues that and they're, they're trying to take it out of them, or I think administrative, like, he's this man is complaining about gender equality that's going to bring too much attention to our university. Like, let's figure out a way, a loophole to eliminate him. Also, it's 2017. Can we, like, <laughs> can we all agree that everybody should be treated equally? Like, do, right? we, do, do we really need to discuss this? No like, trainer that, somebody, at a university. Yeah, that just, that that, 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 like, that's mind-boggling. the winningest, like... Program. Right. If anything, and I'm going to attend to this program because they actually win. Yeah. They bring revenue to our university. I mean, the countless things that they have done for the program as far as, I, I, I mean, just date back like 20 years ago. They can't be making that much money. Yeah. And then raising money to make their facilities better mm -hmm. and then giving their bonuses away back into the program. I mean, the Lotifs have given their lives pretty much exactly. to this program. And, and you can tell. Yeah. You can tell they did. Mm -hmm. So if you're just joining us, I see some people coming in. Uh, we're getting some more views. If you're just joining us, we're talking solely about the Mike Lateef firing um, and kind of all the drama that is around that. The, the report, um, like kind of like the damning report by one former player, his current team kind of going to the press conference and writing a letter and seeing behind him. So that's, that's where we are. We want to hear your thoughts. Um, we got a question in here or a comment um you know saying that maybe this is why 14 year olds shouldn't be committing yes when they're so young because maybe they can't really understand what culture they're coming into what do you guys think about early recruiting with this type of issue i have so many problems with that sometimes but i was also we're gonna go. recruited go. early Bridget, yeah. we're gonna let you take this we have an early talk about this? we got to recruit we, we got an early, early recruit and Bridget's gonna take yeah, this one early commit <laughs> i think too uh i have so many thoughts on this but uh some, I just feel like with softball and, like, rec early recruiting, like, yeah, that girl's good at the age of – I can go so many routes, but I'll just go with this one first. She's really good at the age of 14. Once she gets to 18, some like 18 and under, sometimes that, that changes, and it's just like she's not that good anymore. So, you know, like – You were still that good. I, I was. I was fast. You know, like, I, I was. I, I was really fast. I was. So I don't think I was going to get any slower. When, from when did you commit? When did you commit? I committed my end of eighth grade going to freshman okay. year of high school. Okay. I've always wanted to be a Longhorn, though. Yeah. I mean, I was watching the greats. Oh, boy. I was watching the greats, and oh I wanted to be, what can I say? Say? To be a Longhorn. Love. What can I say? You know what I'm saying? Like, she I knows was a watching. good thing when I, you see it. I you did. Know? I did. I seen yeah. you. I seen you working. I'm going to get off this Longhorn love train. Uh, 
uh, <laughs> go back to the question. Um, I do, I do <laughs> well, think early recruiting. Yeah, I do think that's a good point, though. Like, at, you know, at 14, 13, 14, maybe this becomes more the parents' decision than the kids. Totally. You know, like, I've, I don't think a 14-year-old can really walk into a, and understand the Yeah, I'm going to go on the other <laughs> end, though, okay, because we're, we're a show about perspectives. Yeah. And we've had this discussion before. If you're, like, you know, 16 and somebody hands you the keys to a brand new Range Rover. You're going to drive. I'm going to be like, that. I'm going to be like, Range where's my Porsche? Get the Range Rover out here. I'm going to go with my Porsche. <laughs> I feel like parents though are so involved and they're so pushed and they're so, um, oh my God, I got to get my, my, I got to get my daughter a scholarship. I got to yep. get my daughter a scholarship. I feel like parents, softball parents these days, they'll do anything to get their kid a scholarship. And I feel like sometimes they just need to be a little bit more patient because some, I mean, I feel like you get so many, tra- I feel like the transfer rates are really high these, mm-hmm. these days. Mm-hmm. Two, just because you think that you're getting somewhere, and then it's like, oh, Susie's not playing, but she was promised to play, and it's like, I mean, yep. that's just the culture. Like, maybe she wasn't as developed, mm-hmm. you know, when she got to the university as she was in travel ball. It's, right. it's a totally different level of play, too, and I, it's, it's, like di- it's, it's different from travel ball than it is when you get to college. It's different from college when you get to the professional level. And sometimes those kids aren't ready for that. Yeah. yeah. They look well, really good in 18 and under, you know, in travel ball, and then once they get to... Once they get to the university, they're out, they're out of shape. They're not making their mild times. They're like, they're just not ready. They're just not developed. And I mean, I think it. I don't come from early recruiting. I just think it comes from what I don't. I don't want to say the wrong word. You can say the wrong word. We say the <laughs> wrong word all the time. Yeah, it's fine. I, I think I just think that there's like an arms race in recruiting going on. Yeah, yeah colleges, like who can get who which, can get committed yeah, first. Yeah, and it creates this frenzy. Mm-hmm you know, in the club and parent world. So, like, that pretty much initiates kind of, like, this kind of hysteria of, like, getting mm-hmm. committed. She needs right to be committed away. by her junior You know what I mean? It's like, and it's just, like... And we've talked about this when the other side is, like, parents kind of breathe a sigh of relief when their kid is, is committed, you know. But for me, this so when we're getting back to the, the Mike Lateef situation, um, you know, it... it you know, you brought up the, oh, you're 16, here's some keys to the Land Rover. <laughs> that may not be the best choice, though, for that kid, right? So what I'm saying is, like... But if I'm a saying point, that kid's going to take it. Right? They're going to take No, it. absolutely. Gonna so I'm saying, it. like, there's some, due, there's some due diligence on the <laughs> right. part of the parents, right? So, like, mm-hmm. don't take... If your kid is like, I want to go to UL, like, I want to play for Mike Lotif, and he has, like, a really intense culture, that may not be the best fit for your kid. Like, you... Mm-hmm. So, and the kid might not know that because she's 13 or 14 years mm-hmm. old, so it comes kind of down to the parents to understanding their kid and understanding what they're taking their kid into, right? I think it's is also, a, is compa- it I think it's also yes. a comparison, too, though, because a lot of the kids are like, oh, my God, I want to go to OU because of Lauren Chamberlain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah. Lauren Chamberlain been hitting like that for a while. You're not going to go there, and you're not going to start hitting like Lauren Chamberlain. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. Jose Washington giving you a dose of reality. You're not going to hit like Lauren Chamberlain. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to say that you're not capable of it, but I'm saying That's like, oh, you, they helped. Like, you know, like she got on that pedestal. And she made the best of her as she could. I mean, she got obviously better, but you going to that school is not, or you going to Michigan is not going to make you a Sydney Romero. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, a Sierra Romero. Truth Michigan. bomb. Tree Period. Bomb. Yeah. Real talk with yeah. Jay Washington. That's what this is going to become. Period. Yeah, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna speak from the parent side. A lot of them, this is their first time going through this experience, so it's yeah. just they they're not that equipped to mm-hmm. handle the situation. And we know this. It's like if you're a parent, you just like want your kid to be happy. Right. You know what I mean? You just want them to be happy and they, on the like, highest level. Too. They go on they go on a trip and they see their kid like light up and they're like, Mom, I. And they're like, okay, honey. Right. Like, we yeah. support you. You know? I don't know. It's and just then you tough. have those real parents. My mom was a very realistic parent. Yep. Your mom is real. She is. I appreciate it. I mean, her and realness. so was my travel ball coach. I yeah. know, girl, she had us make a whole list of universities we want to go to. She told some girls just straight up, like, you're not a UCLA player. Take that off your list. But you'll get some, some coaches that'll say, okay, we'll just keep trying. And then their spirits are hurt. Yeah. So you got to be a kind of realistic parent these days and a realistic coach as well. Yeah, good point. Totally agree. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody is a D1 player. Yeah. Dropping There's a bombs. school for yeah. everybody. Truth bomb. Uh, just, just being up front. There's yeah. a school for everyone, though. Yes, I agree. Ja, feel. <laughs> ja, definitely feel. <laughs> 
Well, let's let's uh, we've we've run out of time. Yeah, our studio guy's like, dude, I gotta have lunch. Like, get out, get out of here. <laughs> like, he's ready, he's ready to eat, folks. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we all should definitely talk about this topic some more, though, just because it's gonna get like it's gonna get some Lateef? more. Some oh no, more, Lateef? oh yeah, some more juice is gonna spill, yeah. and I can't wait. Yeah, we talked about Auburn for. I mean, oh there, was, there was something new with all. That's another thing before we leave. There's so many coaches that do so many foul things and still have a job. We were talking about this earlier. Project so for this man to just talk about gender equality, like to bring that up to his administrative. Yeah, and then, and then lose his and job. Lose his job. Yeah. And there's coaches that, you know, date their players, marry them, and they still have a job. That, that's, that baffles me. But, you know, no, no tea, no shade. Yeah. Well, as long <laughs> <laughs> no tea, no shade. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have you back. Yeah. Uh, this is whenever fun. you're in town. I get hot thinking about right? this stuff. I know. Like, it's a little warm on. in the studio, though, too. It is. It totes <laughs> my goats. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we won't have a show next week, but we'll have one, I think, the following. Because I'm out of town. I'm going back to Oklahoma. Oh, you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. You guys. You guys will see what's up. Okay. okay. But until next time, see you guys. Bye bye.